Hello and welcome back to 4FS Gaming. I'm sorry this video is coming out a little bit late because I've been away in Tassie all weekend, but there is a whole lot of news for Hunt Showdown this week, and this time there is news for everyone, regardless of if you play on PC or console. So we have some PC news, some Xbox news, and some PS4 news, all of which is very exciting. In the background you'll see some gameplay of the new training modes in update 1.2 with some of the new equipment. Firstly, after an immense delay, the Xbox version of the game will be updated to par with the PC version. This will happen on the 18th of February, and the update will include both 1.1.3 and 1.2 content, which is the next PC patch. For Xbox players, this means that you will finally have access to the Springfield and Martini Henry rifles, and their many variants, as well as all of the additional material being deployed in update 1.2. For PlayStation players, the game will finally release on your platform on the 18th of Feb as well. And I really just want to welcome all of those joining us from the PS4 to the Hunt community. With the major announcements out of the way, we need to talk about Update 1.2 itself, which is currently on the PC test servers, and by February 18, all platforms will be running this version of the game, provided Crytek sticks to their timeline. However, the PC will probably get it a little bit earlier. This update has five major components. The first of which is that random matchmaking can now be used to find random teams of three. So if you don't have friends to play with, but you want to play in trios rather than just duos, then you will be able to do so through the random partner matchmaking. Another big change is a complete overhaul of the onboarding and tutorial system. Instead of a one-time skippable mini-mission when you first load up the game, there are now three replayable tutorials with varying degrees of difficulty, with the hardest representing a smaller version of a typical bounty hunt, but without any other players. Now this is a great addition for a number of reasons. Firstly, it allows new players more of a chance to find their feet before being thrown into the deep end. Secondly, it allows experienced players to warm up and practice shooting in a private environment in order to test out the specifics of different weapons, mechanics, and equipment. Thirdly, everyone will get a total of 850 blood bonds just for completing the three tutorial tiers, and that is a very nice bonus. It should be noted that this is not a replacement to the firing range or custom lobby that the devs plan to add later down the line. The third component of Update 1.2 is an overhaul of the controversial Boss Whisper anti-camping mechanics. Whether you loved it or hated it, you have to admit that the current Boss Whispers are confusing and difficult for new players to interpret, so the new system is much more simple. When you activate Dark Sight within 50 meters of a boss room, you will hear light whispers and the boss icon will flash white. This means that you are the only team within 50 meters of that boss. If it flashes red and the whispers are loud, then an enemy team is also within 50 meters of the boss. This allows you to tell if an enemy team is camping close to the boss room as you approach, and also if a team is sneaking up on you as you are actually fighting the boss. The jury for me is out on this one. I'll have to see how it plays on the live server to see if I like it better or worse than the previous, although it's a lot simpler so I think that's a good change by itself. Now the fourth component of this update is some new melee equipment. As you can see in the background there is a new knife variant, the heavy knife, and it deals more damage, costs more, and uses more stamina. We also have the knuckle knife, which combines the light attack of the brass knuckles with a slightly weaker knife heavy attack. After playing around with both of these, I'm not really convinced that either is more efficient than the normal knife or dusters, but they offer some versatility, and the heavy knife in particular is very efficient at killing grunts, as it can do so in a single light swing. We also have two new world items, the pitchfork and the shovel, both of which you can pick up and use like the axe or the hammer or lanterns. The pitchfork is a piercing weapon like a bayonet, and the shovel is more of a meme weapon that makes a nice thunk sound when you strike a target. I think killing a hunter with this is kind of the ultimate humiliation. The final component of update 1.2 is a slew of bug fixes and performance enhancements. I was able to push a few more frames out of the test server build this time around, but we always have to wait until it hits the live server to really see how these bug fixes and enhancements are going. There is also some minor rebalancing for the Talon and Hatchet variants, bringing their damage and stamina consumption in line with the Machete. Explosive Blast Radius has been altered to make walls provide slightly more protection, and the Aperture Sight on the Windfield can now be flipped up or down. They also changed the burn duration for those pools of oil lying on the ground, and they will now burn for a full 5 minutes, making them a real impact on the match when defending a compound, 
and the bonuses for hunting as a solo or duo against larger teams has been further increased to offset that increased difficulty. All of these changes should be pretty healthy for the game, and I look forward to them hitting the live PC servers in the next week or so, and all Xbox and now PS4 players will have this game version on the 18th of February. Feel free to ask any further questions in the comments below, and don't forget to check out our Twitch, Discord and Patreon linked in the description. Thank you so much for watching, this is Ascendance from 4FS Gaming.